uh, whatever um, prayer requests are there we share with each other and we pray for each other and uh, they are really a spiritual support to me and also uh, other things also thank you yeah so nice uh, thank you susan thank you so much for sharing uh, from your life and experience and you know that that is what we are talking about you know it's so precious to have uh, people uh, alongside you who know you uh, you can pray with them they can encourage you strengthen you in your ministry as much as you can uh, give back into their lives and strengthen them so uh, that's wonderful and uh, you know uh, uh, yeah that that is what each one of us looks forward to okay so uh, anyone else anything else that you want to add uh yes yes christopher oh yes pastor so i was just wondering if um, you've encountered any situations um or heard of any uh, situations where um you know being a brother or sister or or a father or mother Mm. um has uncovered or you know in in confidence you know people have said things um it could be weaknesses it could be you know um uh, you know times when uh, um they may have fallen and um what what has been a kind of a real life sort of scenario where um they may it may require to be you know uh, have have another you know a, a senior um person on the leadership team to get involved in this even though things have been mentioned in, in confidence we just wanted to just wanted to understand if, if that is that is happened that you has occurred to you mm-hmm. yeah yeah thank you thank you christopher uh, the answer to the first part of your question is ever so often you know have they shared uh, about things uh you know that that are sensitive uh yes you know there are so many struggles that that people go through believers go through elders in uh, church go through um strong uh, ministers of god go through uh and when we have that rapport they are they're willing to open up and share uh and be vulnerable so ever so often uh, christopher and uh, i mean i i think it's a privilege that people can trust us to to open up and you know tell us uh, what their real challenges their real struggles are so yes that has happened mm, and have i uh, i mean have i ever needed to get somebody involved in that situation i'm just thinking i'm just thinking uh, i think not not really yeah i've never had to uh, ask someone to to step in uh, you know such 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 a situation has not happened uh, but i know but i know of others uh, you know when let, let's say uh, some examples would be uh, suppose someone that you know they're sharing with you they're really open and uh, if they share about being very depressed or being suicidal you know they they open up and they share things like that uh, i know this is to be confidential but you know we see that the person needs help uh, more than just support that family friends or even a christian brother and a sister can provide uh, they might need uh counseling they might need medication right so they might need immediate attention if you you are recognizing that you know here is a person uh who's repeatedly telling you you know i feel suicidal something like that uh then it is uh imperative that you know you ask for external help of course you you would try to uh convince that person that look you need help you know you need someone else uh, also to speak to you why don't you get some counseling so i know of friends who have had to do that but i personally have not had to involve someone in the situation christopher yeah thank you yes 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 thank you thank you for that mm, yeah so uh, i was also thinking you know of uh, uh, 
some of these i mean i really didn't want to bring up names of uh, you know ministers of god whom we know you know that they have stumbled fallen in a big way uh, but it was making me think you know how what if what if those individuals had uh, people around them whom they could whom they could trust okay i'm, I'm talking one side now uh, if they had people whom they could trust they could be vulnerable with, with they could be real with and you know share their real challenges uh, and still know that hey you know this person uh, yes they they will listen and uh, they will uh, you know, they will share the truth of god's word but they won't they won't like bombard and hurt me with the truth of god's word uh, but you know in a loving way uh, they will definitely speak correction into my life and i'm open to that i'm willing to take it uh, even if uh, you know it it, it really um, puts me through some struggles to hear the truth that's okay you know i'm i'm ready to take it so just imagine if there were such supportive brothers and sisters maybe some of those ministers uh, would have been ready to share and not go to the extent that they did and you know fail morally um, fail uh, in their ministry uh, now the other side is that there could have been people who are willing to listen but if the minister is not willing to open up now if the minister is not willing to be real uh, now that can also be very problematic they one could continue uh, living life as if nothing has happened you know making the mistakes repeatedly and behave like hey i'm fine uh, and also continue to serve in ministry as if nothing has happened now that is what we call self deception and that's very dangerous very very dangerous you know when one is not uh, ready to keep short accounts with god and short accounts with people around uh, and uh, yeah we have seen we have seen ministers like that also so all of this is like a lesson for us it's a warning for us uh, and you know it's it's just better to um, uh, be humble one of us mentioned that be humble be teachable we don't know everything we don't know everything even how to move in the anointing how to rightly divide the word of god yeah we do our best but obviously we don't know everything we need uh, you know people around we need brothers and sisters to support uh, fathers and mothers to impart teach guide and uh, as long as we are in a position where we say yeah i am in need okay i am in need uh, uh, of help from god help from my family help from other ministers of god i think that's a safe place the day we say that i know everything i can handle it you know i have enough experience i have done this you know uh, i have taught this chapter 50 times i don't have to read it one more time that is the day that you know you you it's like uh, some that downward spiral is starting the moment we say that the downward spiral is starting so we have to always be in that place and position before god and people where we say that you know i need god i need people i can't make it on my own okay so just to encourage us as as uh, you know kingdom builders as god's people because you know sometimes ministry can do that when we start seeing uh, a positive response from people and unfortunately for some ministers of god you know it's it's fame it's money it's power it's influence right uh, and that can bring us to a position where we feel i don't need anybody okay i i don't need uh, to accept reality i can live in my bubble and i'm okay but that is self deception and it is uh, extremely destructive extremely destructive and we don't want that in the kingdom of god and in fact we have to help one another prevent one another from uh, you know getting on that track so that's that's why god has uh, put us in a body and uh, we are there for each other and we must be there for each other so when we see a brother sinning when we see a brother failing uh, don't be the first one to you know condemn and judge uh, such that they you know they close off like one touch me not they just close they don't want to listen to anything more from us but instead uh, if they can trust us they can share you know, we are preventing that individual from 
walking on that path you know, that that destructive path that we just talked about so it's really important very very important and uh, you know um, yeah so just want to leave it at that uh, so if there are no more questions or comments we can move on to the next section here um okay yes yes christopher please go ahead now just to i guess uh, i guess continue on that on that same mm. you know, yeah. kind of thought uh, i'm just thinking that uh, uh, you know as you mentioned you know fame and you know position and power and uh, popularity is you know definitely plays a part but um, um I, I, I mean, I just, I'm just, I'm just thinking that, you know, it seems to be, as you know, so overpowering, and you know, those, those, those aspects of, 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 of their lives, that it, um, it seems to, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, sway over, uh, uh, you know, their, their entire sort of, you know, fundamental sort of, uh, uh, you know, need to be saved, because. Um, it's just sort of you know completely uh, you know i mean it is a double life actually you know in, in a way which uh, which uh, uh, you know they are leading and um uh, you know i i, I just i, I just uh, you know you know sometimes think you know what you know what 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 is the, what are some of the factors that you know makes them reach that particular point that it is a complete, uh, you know, there's complete self-deception, um, which, is, which is happening. Yeah. 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 Thanks, uh, Christopher. Yeah. Thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts on that. Mm. So, what are those things that could lead them to that place of self-deception? I mean, I've heard Pastor share this. He says that um, uh, if uh, what. Huh. If one cannot be true to God, and one cannot be true to self, then there is a chance that that person won't be true to others. So as long as we can be true, see even others, it's it's kind of easy to to um, you know live a life in front of others where they believe that you are a certain way, while things are contrary in your life so it's uh, what i'm saying is it's easy to deceive others even people who are really close to us but we cannot deceive god we cannot deceive self we cannot deceive our conscience the the answer to your question how how does one get there i think you know i i agree with what what uh, pastor says and i agree with it that you know when we um, try to hide before God, and we don't accept right our mistake or what what is going wrong with us. Uh, maybe just to to feel good or you know that whole ego thing. Uh, we don't want to own up. So when we are not true to God and true to self, you know it's possible uh, that we convince ourselves nothing is wrong with me. I'm doing it right. You know that's why when we read about uh, the conquest of the mind. Oh, there it says every thought then um, uh, there's that progression right reasoning argument stronghold so we can go from uh, a thought that hey i'm right to a stronghold where i have i have convinced myself that nothing is wrong with me I'm, i have convinced myself that hey i'm doing it all right even if you know the best of the best people come and tell me with facts look at all of this what you're doing is not correct. I can get myself to a place where I believe with all of my being that I'm correct. Okay. So these two things, Christopher, you know, being being true to God and being true to self, that is sort of the key. Because convincing others is very easy. Deceiving others is very easy. But deceiving God and deceiving oneself, you know, if we start off on that track, then you know the downfall is assured. And unfortunately, I think that's what happens to ministers. Yeah, so just adding to what you shared there. OK, um, all right, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's continue on. Uh, we are talking about raising the next generation for kingdom service. And uh, this happens to be the last chapter 
in kingdom builders so uh, uh you know uh yeah we have come if we complete this today then we have uh, technically completed the portions uh, for this course. However, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe since we have time, why not have an assignment which is uh, interactive uh, or you know something uh, along the lines of making some presentations. So I'll post it on the Google Classroom. Okay, I'll post it. Give you sufficient time, uh, uh, but yeah, be prepared to connect next week on the call it's not like you know your your portions are over so there are no classes uh, we'll probably continue on for uh, another week or two um, uh, doing something else during this time that has been allotted to us so uh, just uh, uh, just something there now let's move on to this chapter chapter 10 which is about raising the next generation for kingdom service uh, we've talked about the importance of uh, fathering people okay and fathering essentially means nurturing them strengthening them in their spiritual walk strengthening them in their uh, call uh, that god has for their lives now when we look at the example of apostle paul you know uh, he had many people that he invested in that he raised up as the next generation uh, to you know carry on the work so no wonder you know after paul was gone now 2000 years after you know the the death the resurrection of uh, christ the uh, the first century church doing what they did how is it that the the work of god has carried on you know thus far obviously the the ones who uh, served also raised up the next generation and, and they were the ones who continued the the work and and that's how the work has spread uh, for for these many years now Though the work has happened, you know, we want to closely look at how it, how uh, Paul and you know some of uh, the leaders of of his time they invested in the younger generation. How did they really raise up uh, ministers of God? Okay, so we know Paul talks about Timothy, and I, I think I will I will uh, highlight some aspects there. So it'll be good if someone can please read the passage from uh, Philippians two verses 19 to 22 page number 102 philippians 2 verses 19 to 22 okay anybody who is able to read please Somebody. ah yes yes kennedy but i trust in the lord jesus christ to send timothy to you shortly that I also may be encouraged when I know your faith. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your faith. For, for all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father has served with me in the gospel. God has given us the ability to procreate both in the natural and in the spiritual. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kennedy. So, you know, we see here that uh, Paul is speaking very highly of Timothy, whom he has nurtured, he has worked with. Um, uh, Timothy is sort of grown under his care. Okay. And he's speaking well about Timothy, that I'm going to send you Timothy. Uh, you know, he's like-minded or uh, he thinks like me. He thinks like me about kingdom purposes, about uh, kingdom work. And then uh, he says that uh, he he is not a self-seeking person or uh, he is definitely committed to the purpose of God's kingdom. And he also talks about the proven character. So Timothy has grown well. He has matured well in the Lord. He has matured well as a minister of the gospel. Uh, and he says a son. You know, he's, the way he has served is like a son with his father. So that like-mindedness, right? Like-mindedness, commitment, love, selflessness. Uh, it's as if Timothy is a son in the ministry for Paul. And he doesn't hesitate to even call him uh, his son. And, uh, you know, he says that uh, God has given us the ability to have sons and daughters 
in the natural as well as in the spiritual so that we can have sons and daughters uh, in the kingdom of god and it is really important for us to have them because they end up being the next generation okay they are the ones who will carry forward the work of god now another passage which is also there in our notes first corinthians 4 you know paul talks about how he has begotten he has begotten uh, the believers through the gospel so the paul was very passionate about doing the work but at the same time raising up the next generation no wonder he says you know he begotten or giving birth giving birth to uh, others for christ to be formed in others uh, in the kingdom of god so uh, this is very biblical to have uh, the next generation come up or to prepare the next generation to serve god so there will be if you want to term them sons and daughters you know uh, whom we can develop in the kingdom of god now just because you know there are successors or sons and daughters in the ministry uh, it is it is not to say that you no know, they will be just like us or you know uh, that they will be the term used here in our notes is xerox copies of the the uh, senior pastor or the the you know the main man of god or the woman of god so they will not be the they will not do ministry exactly the way the so called father or the mother is doing ministry but we are nurturing them into their call so they will go after their purpose they will have their own style they will make you know their kind of choices and decisions in the ministry that cannot be controlled or regulated but we can only ensure that the person is equipped thoroughly the person matures well the person you know develops good character and a backbone right like when you stand what holds you that backbone so you you make sure that they grow in such a way that they are strong leaders for the future and they are uh, you know uh, well developed in every sense spiritually uh, they are well developed you know um, you you do your best in the natural aspects as well you know how they conduct themselves how they handle family how they handle finances how how they make their decisions and and all of that okay so uh, there will be sons and daughters but they will not be the exact copy of the leaders themselves Uh, and uh, you know it, uh, again it's it's um, it's really important to have successes otherwise uh, when we talked about the local church and we said a strong local church what is it that makes a local church very strong one of the things is having leaders in the church okay or having uh, leaders are like the pillars we said you know they hold the the work of god in a Uh, in a local church setting so to have leaders and to have some of these leaders as those successors you know who will continue the work long after we are gone that is what determines the longevity the um, effectiveness of the ministry that we are doing and it's also uh, really us being faithful to the work that god has called us because you know usually you find that uh, god calls one person and then they have to uh, uh, pass on you know that legacy they have to pass on the uh, baton to the next person so you had a moses but then when moses's time was done there needed to be a joshua who was ready to take on the next phase of uh, the work that god was calling him to do and similarly you know just to keep carry on keep uh, carrying on the work of god you needed the next person and the next person and the next person uh, to do god's work even jesus when he was here he invested there were so many people who followed the crowds followed jesus okay, that's what we study but he invested in the lives of 12 uh, people he trained them he equipped them and we'll also see you know how to really raise up these successors but he let them see his life he took them along in the ministry okay he let them do ministry uh, under his watch you know to guide them and lead them you know at the time when the disciples were not able to cast out the demon they ca- came and asked jesus hey it's not working please tell us so then he gives them the insight and he says okay this kind will not come out except by prayer and fasting so he's training them he's showing them the way he's guiding them leading them so when 
Jesus has ascended into heaven, uh, you have these 12 people, okay, oh, well, 11 at that point, um, but you know what I mean. There were those who had a grip on things to the extent that they were ready to carry on the work that God had, uh, Jesus had left with them. So what if those 12 were not around? You, know, you wouldn't have the book of Acts. You know, you, you wouldn't have that connecting book to the rest of the epistles that, uh, uh, you know, Paul and, and the other apostles wrote because the whole movement of, of uh, uh, taking the gospel out, planting churches, who did that? Jesus didn't do it. The 12 disciples. And then, you know, you had them preaching. On the very first day, 3,000 people got added to the church. And then you have all kinds of names, you know, here and there. You have uh, those seven volunteers in Acts 6 who also were preaching. They were, uh, um, you know, they had good testimony. They had faith. They had, uh, uh, you know, they, they were working wonders, miracles, just like the apostles. So the basically what I'm saying is successors training of successors. We see that in scripture. There were people, apostles, leaders, they were investing in successors. You know, Barnabas, think about Barnabas. Uh, he intentionally went and he brought Paul. Okay, The, the other leaders were not willing to trust him because he uh, was known to be a persecutor. But Barnabas invested in, in Paul and we know that you know many uh, People actually call him as a mentor to Paul. So, successors, successors. And then later you don't read about Barnabas in, in the book of Acts. You read about Paul. So, there's always that next person who was trained, equipped, uh, you know, who, who has an understanding of their destiny, their work, who's able to carry on the work. And uh, we as ministers of God, no, we are responsible to keep the work going uh, and so you know successors are very important if there are no successors then you know the work is incomplete in a way everything that we worked for there's nobody to hand it over to you know, there's nobody who has a capacity to handle it anymore so what 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 does the local church do or what would the ministry do or you know what would that aspect of of the kingdom of god do just shut shop finished Till another person comes on the scene, they reinvent the wheel, you know, they go through the entire journey, again create resources, you know, the, the whole thing has to repeat itself because there was nobody to carry on what one generation had done so beautifully. So if there are no successes, then what we are doing uh, will not be effective. So in a in a way, if I can use the word fail, okay, it's a it's a very serious word, but you know, it's somewhat like that because the work stops there and cannot be carried on. Okay. Uh, and and uh, there's a mention here, like a pastor has mentioned, the day you begin any ministry is the day you should start planning for your departure. Okay. How do we do that? We do that by uh, consciously looking out for those who can carry out the work after we are gone. So yeah, we may have a good you know, 20 years or 25 years as we see it in the ministry work, but after I'm gone, who's going to carry this forward? So we start praying into that. We start asking God, okay, God, you know, show me those people, help me to connect with those people, help me to you know, impart into their lives so on and so forth so you know this is the god we serve and, and even in his promise um he speaks over his people in isaiah 59 verse 21 now uh, it says uh, the lord says um, this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my words which i have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. So the word which he has put in our mouth, he desires for that to be in the mouths of our descendants, next generation, the generations that come after. So how can we serve, how can we minister in such a way that the work is carried on, that we are able to impart we are able to strengthen and raise up 
you know other ministers of god many many ministers of god who will carry on who will keep the work going okay and that's what uh, god really desires so uh, god wants in in this verse we saw that you know he wants to put his spirit so we could also look at it this way you know god wants to um, uh, keep putting that anointing generation after generation so if we've carried the anointing we must raise up a, a you know set of people the next level the next line of leaders who are capable of continuing you know carrying the anointing if we've carried you know some level of revelation we have to uh, raise up a generation that is ready to carry uh, another level of revelation okay so that's what we are talking about when we are saying you know raise up leaders it's not so much uh, to say that okay let's uh, imagine a local church and the senior pastor uh, the senior pastor is uh, you know in close to uh, his sunset years so he decides okay in another 2 years i am going to stop uh, leading this church so on paper he might pick somebody from the crowd and say okay so and so will be the next senior pastor and hand it over to that person that's good but you know uh, having developed that person over a period of time uh, would be even better because then we know that they are spiritually prepared to handle a responsibility of that sort okay uh, it's not so much of just picking somebody and putting them in that position and sometimes actually it doesn't work okay uh, it may not even work if we do it that way but you know we we are praying and we are asking god okay god uh, help us to raise up the next generation with the capacity you know to carry the anointing to carry the revelation to carry on the work okay uh, and you know god is a god he doesn't he doesn't make everybody the same so you would see a certain pastor or a leader and they have an anointing on their life uh, you could look at somebody who works with them and say hey so similar you know the way this person ministers is just like how the other person ministers but still you know what is god doing you know he is pouring out a fresh anointing it's a fresh anointing it's a you know a fresh way of working through another life uh, and that's how god works so we do our part investing in others and it's god's job you know to re- to release that anointing to release that understanding that revelation uh, and empower the next generation the way they need to be empowered because you know we read about uh, david isn't it we read that he fulfilled the purpose of god in his generation so every generation has a mandate and uh, only god knows you know how the the ministers of that time are to be prepared to serve in that generation now we we are just being obedient to god by investing in the next generation god will release the fresh anointing he will release you know the the additional revelation that they require and you know their style their way of doing things their decision will be applicable to their generation so every individual every minister serving in that time in their generation the way uh, you know the uh, the kingdom needs to advance uh, basically we just have to be obedient and walk with god and god will strengthen us and empower us to do that and uh, we must remember to invest in uh, the next generation okay so now uh, there there is uh, a couple of additional thoughts here about raising up next generation um Uh, the i i'll just read the passage in our notes first corinthians 4 verse 17 for this reason i have sent timothy to you who is my beloved and faithful son in the lord who will remind you of my ways in christ as i teach everywhere in every church so that just shows about the effectiveness of paul's mentoring that he was able to guide and lead a young person um like timothy all these years that now he has become uh, or he is becoming a seasoned minister of god that he is able to um, you know uh, call him a fellow minister call him a brother call him uh, you know a worker a minister of the lord and he is uh, completely 
backing up timothy uh, and you know uh, vouching for timothy and he's saying look he's he's very dear to me i can confirm his character he is my beloved and he is also a faithful son already we saw how paul calls uh, timothy a son but he says faithful son that that is amazing to uh, be able to mentor in that way and of course you know from timothy's side for him to walk uh, humbly before the before the lord and um, with paul in that manner uh, okay uh, charles is is that a question you have it's not a question it is it is something about mentorship and having someone mm. you, yeah, please go you ahead. are through example through practice uh, there was this professor who had a driver and then the professor was teaching a certain topic for many years was teaching the same topic and this driver would be sitting at the back in the room where the professor is teaching so time reached and then the driver told the the professor but sir i can teach that lesson now i can teach that lecture so the man said no you can't he said i can i have attended it so many years so now the professor allowed and now the <clears throat> now the man went in front and started teaching and teaching when session for question and answer came uh a question was short and now uh he could not answer it and what he did he said okay now let me ask my driver to answer this and he was talking about the professor who had who was already seated at the back so the professor woke up and answered and everyone was marveling how uh, the, the the driver is now answering the things for the professor while he was the real professor but the driver is the one who was teaching so some of the times we we might teach uh, by example we might become fathers we might raise up uh, people through example even those that had not been uh, ready to do work they might find themselves doing work that's what i wanted to bring out thank you yeah yes yes yeah thank you thank you uh, charles very valuable and uh, just in line with what we are saying that uh, when one is well trained so the way you know paul uh, calls timothy his faithful son well equipped uh, to the extent where he is now able to recommend timothy as a minister to others okay and uh, paul is saying you know he will remind you of my ways in christ to also say what uh, uh, charles was saying here he was saying that we um, let people follow our example okay our example so timothy seems to have followed paul's example really well and you know paul says that i imitate christ imitate me as i imitate christ so uh, timothy had that same standard and uh, you know uh, he was a good example also and uh, paul is really recommending him so the point is the point that we we um, gather from this relationship <coughs> excuse me that paul has with timothy uh, is that you know um we need successors we need successors and uh, a good foundation needs to be laid for these successors uh, they need to be well equipped so that they can carry on the work of god and the timothys you know that paul raised up uh, now in scripture to uh, just today i was thinking you know i i don't know too much about what timothy did um, uh, apart from you know a, a few verses that are mentioned uh, in scripture but maybe i should just study and see you know what what timothy could accomplish after paul was gone uh, but you know it, it is like the timothys that we invest in today Right? they end up being the pauls of tomorrow See, look at this paul is recommending him why because paul also knows and when he writes to timothy he tells him look the time for my departure is very close i i will need to go so i am charging you i am instructing you 
know, you fight the good fight of faith. So he trained him very well, and I'm sure you know Timothy did a fantastic job. Uh, and uh, you know the Timothys whom we train up, you know, after the Pauls are gone, they are the ones who really become uh, those Pauls leading the churches and strengthening God's work. Okay, uh, we need to raise the next generation. Otherwise, no one will continue the work after the present generation passes away. That's something we've said. Um, uh, another point here is that in the present church, you know, the way things happen, uh, sometimes the current generation, okay, the current generation uh, is so absorbed with all the attention that you know they don't, they it's sort of miss or they forget about the next generation now that also is is quite dangerous okay uh, and uh, um, not necessarily about ministers or uh, you know having the next generation of ministers but you know one one thing that i think about is children's church okay for a long time like when i when i started serving um, uh, you know in preaching and uh, serving as an associate pastor i never knew the importance of children's church so in our location there were only a, uh, I think there was only one or two couples who had children uh, of the age where they could learn. All the other kids were, you know, way younger. They would just be running around here and there. But uh, I never really did anything about children's church for the longest time till. You know, we used to have these uh, discussions for review and all that. So when when we had the review, that's when uh, you know I was told, "Hey, why why don't you have a proper children's church? Uh, you're only focusing on the adult church. What will happen to the children? They will not learn anything. And if they don't learn anything, uh, imagine you know we we've we've grown in the Lord and the church has exploded, multiplied, you know, leaps and bounds, and you have thousands of people coming in, uh, but." Those children who grew in the past 10, 15 years, they have not been trained well. You know, the word was not sown into them, uh, you know, properly, thoroughly. They don't know about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to deal with, you know, practical issues in school or now those kids will be in college. So it's funny, isn't it? Like the, the adult church uh, is, is all absorbing the 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 word of god and they are growing but the foundation which these kids have when they are ready to join adult church their foundation is very shaky very very shaky and it's all as if once they join the adult church now they'll have to re uh, unlearn relearn things uh, and you know be equipped as a uh, your natural next generation. So, I mean, I was just thinking about that. Uh, and yes, you know, rightly, I was advised early on that, hey, you must focus. You must focus on the children's church because it is very important okay, for, uh, for uh, young kids to, uh, they need a journey with God also. They need to know that when they pray, uh, yeah, this is a real God, he answers. Uh, this is the real word of God. It works like this uh, in, in their situation. If you're sick, you know, you pray. So now, you know, we have uh, some of the kids um, that I know. The moment you say, hey, I, uh, I'm i not well or I have pain here or there, immediately the, some of the children that I know, uh, they'll lay hands. They'll be like, oh, come, let me pray for you. So they know. You know, this is how God works. This is how uh, the power of God works. And uh, they too can carry God's power in their lives. And age is, you know, not a criteria. So we're talking about, uh, you know, the next generation of leaders. But I just thought I need to throw this in as well. Uh, about the natural children and them growing in the things of God. Otherwise, it will be a huge disconnect. It will be like adult church is somewhere spiritually. The, the, the younger kids, they have no clue uh, about what God is doing. So I think I'll, I'll stop here. looks like, you know, we will chat about this some more in our next session. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Abraham, please, please go ahead. Yes. Yes, Pastor. So talking about children's church, I, yes. I was invited to preach to some kids here. Like um, I'm supposed to share the word of God uh, with them for, I think, about... 25 minutes every Monday. But seriously, I don't know how to get a sermon. 
So what do I do? Because uh, I just feel like maybe it's too, um, maybe it's too high for them, or it's too low. Because these are from five to, I think, um, thirteen years old. So how do I balance this? Because I have only twenty-five minutes every week, and seriously, it's very hard for me to prepare every week. It's very, very hard. I have to pray. I, have, I don't even know how to even go about this. Thing. Is there any advice or any inspiration that I can follow? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Join the club, uh, Abraham. Uh, I'm in the same boat as well. Uh, so what I would say is, see, I, I, I think some of the common subjects, um, you know, that are applicable in India are applicable where you are in Vietnam or you know even your home country when you go back. So. Uh, we have some resources here uh, at APC. I'm just trying to find the links uh, of those resources. Uh, the Children's Church material is here. Uh, but then um, there is one, the Elevate link, I can't find it. Just a moment, Abraham. I'm trying to post it for you. So the Children's Church uh, resources are here. You could probably pick some subjects from there. And they've also included uh, object lessons. You know, the approach of teaching is different, the children. The subject may be the same, but the way you would teach it to an adult will be very different from the way you will teach it to a child. So uh, somebody has already done the hard work of finding object lessons and uh, you know activities, uh, examples. So just go through this material if something helps you if um, uh, you know this content is applicable for your age group then please do that uh, but if there are youth okay young people then let me see let me see okay i am not able to find that link right now abraham but uh, there is a link for the youth where uh, i think you are aware that you know we had this campus uh, elevate program which um, was done through APC so we have developed several resources over the years uh, so there are there is content so you have your sermon notes you have you know some questions that you can ask them you also have for, for some of those topics there's already ready-made PowerPoint so you don't have to make your sermons again you know if they're applicable you just take it uh, tweak it up a little here and there and just use it yeah, coffee talks. Uh, yeah, Tarun, do you think you'd be able to help me find the link to that coffee talk resource? Okay, maybe when you find it, you could post it on the the stream page, Tarun. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, I, I am at the resources, but I still can't find it. Okay, uh, so we'll find it, Abraham, and post it for you. Okay, Pastor, thank you so much. Okay, but does it help? The, the, does what I'm saying help? Yes, please, yes, yes. So I'll go through those materials and then see what I can do from there. Yeah, so just take it, reuse it. Okay. Yeah, I found okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sure, sure. Yep. Thank you, Tarun. It worked. So here it is. Uh, Ibram, you can go here and get the resources you need. So there are subjects like self esteem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Self esteem. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. And I mean, I'll just uh, share some list. So self esteem, there is. Um, you know, finding your purpose, uh, good uh, developing good habits as a young person. Okay, power habits. So there is there is a um, topic on that, mm. uh, and then about you know the, the things of God. You know, how can you be? How can you dare to be different? How how you can be like Daniel in your generation? You can be different. Uh, so yeah, just some topics there. So anyone who's interested, you can take it and you can just reuse it. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I think it's good. Uh, we will continue on the same topic. Uh, let's come back next week. Um, we'll meet for the sessions and then we'll discuss. Okay. All right. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hope you have submitted your assignments. 
uh, I, I will look into it for corrections. But if you haven't, please do. Please submit it. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Thanks, Abraham. Thank you, everyone. Bye.